Hi, Catherine here from Design It Yourself TV, the place to learn how to create marketing resources that will help you grow your business. And today is going to be a quick tutorial on how to create a flyer using Photoshop. Uh, by the end of this training, you will know the exact steps that I took <laughs> to create this particular design. Now the content, of course, it is it could be any type of content. I just used content pertaining to San Francisco because I thought it was appropriate being that I am in San Francisco right now. So let's go ahead and begin. Go ahead and open up Photoshop and create file or go to file new. The size is going to be eight and a half inches by eleven. So let's go ahead and change it to inches. 8.5 and 11. This is a legal size, typical size of a flyer. Let me just adjust it so we could see everything clearly. So open up your browser and go to a website called colorschemedesigner.com. Now this is a really cool website that I use all the time to select the color scheme I'd like to use for my marketing tool. Whether it's a flyer, business card, or postcard, or a website, this is actually a really neat feature where you could uh, choose like warm color, cold color, you could definitely see what color complements each other and what the right contrast is. Um, they even show you a great example on what it would look like on a light page. So if you click on that, it'll show you an example. And then there's another one for dark page. So um, definitely use that if you guys want to use a different color than the one I'm currently using. But I've already selected the color scheme that I'll be using for this particular flyer. So let me just go ahead and open it up. So this is the color that I will be, or the color scheme that I'll be using. So the first thing we want to create is that border um, box at the bottom of the flyer. Let's change the foreground color to this page. Click OK and click on the rectangle tool. Now click and drag this cursor all the way to the right side, creating this effect or this shape. Great. Change the foreground color to blue and click on the rectangle tool again. Click, hold, and drag it out, creating a shape like this. Now let me change the for, uh, foreground color to the blue and click OK. Now I want to duplicate this. I'm going to click and drag it to the new layer button. Do another one because we're going to need three of these. Using the arrow tool, I'm going to go ahead and drag the first layer out. Select the second one and drag that one out. We're going to need to change the color of the second layer. So let me go ahead and double click on it and change this one to the purple and hit OK. Let me change the other rectangular to the green. Double click, hit OK. Great. Now that I have it, I want to be able to separate these. So let me rearrange them. Let's go ahead and resize it first and click on the first layer and Command T. Let's do about 90%. Okay, and then let's click on the blue one and do 90%. <clears throat> Command T to resize it. Click OK. Uh, using the, my right arrow, I'm just moving it a little bit to the right. Let me adjust this too. I'm going to bring the purple one to the first um, layer so that way it's above the other two and resize it as well make it 90. I want to make the height of this one a little different. So I'm going to do Command T again and change the height to about 110. Maybe 115. No, I think I like the 110 better. Okay, and hit OK. And using the arrow key, I am just going to bring this down to make it level. Great. Now I think this is a little too close to the border, so I want to move it up. So go ahead and click on the first layer, hold down the Shift button, and click on the third one. Using your up arrow key, go ahead and move it up a little bit. If you remember on our sample or in the first one that I created, there's some shadow effects. So I'm trying to recreate that. In Photoshop, there's definitely a lot of techniques to do the same effect. Here, I'll use the Eclipse tool to create this shadow effect. Go ahead and click and drag it out, creating a shape like this. Great. Now I want to go ahead and hide this behind these layers. So I'll, I'll click on the layer and drag it down below the third layer. So that way it's hidden behind these rectangular um, shape. On the layer tab at the bottom, you'll see the FX or effects button. Go ahead and click on it and click on drop shadow. 
Be sure the drop box is checked off and you want to change this number to 90. Also make sure that the preview is turned on. Next let's change the distance. If you could see in the preview it's you could kind of see where it's peaking behind the uh, rectangular box. So go ahead and change it just about that size. So you could, it's just right above the border. And then let's change the size, creating this effect. You could play around with this to see which one you like the best, okay? Then let's change the opacity. You could reduce it to create that shadow effect. Once you're satisfied with it, go ahead and click OK. Now let's go ahead and bring in the image. I'm going to click on File Open. I already have the image that I want. Click on this. Now if you notice, on our sample, this was black and white. Change that, go ahead and Photoshop, click on Image, Mode, and Grayscale. And then hit Flatten. That's fine, disregard. If you notice, the gray looks a little dull compared to this. So let's go ahead and enhance that. To do that, go ahead and click on Image Adjust Level. And then go ahead and play with this to get it to your liking. You could make it darker or lighter just by adjusting these little um, tabs. Um, go ahead and let's see here, maybe a little brighter, no, maybe darker. And once you're satisfied with this, go ahead and make this a little darker. There you go. And then click on OK. Now let's go ahead and move this to our flyer by clicking on Command A to select it and then Command V to paste it. Using this tool, go ahead and just adjust it according to where you want it to be. I recommend about this height so it has that much distance from the top and also from the bottom. Be sure to move the image layer behind all the boxes. You do that by clicking on the layer and dragging it down below the last box layer. I think these box layers are a little too big, so let's go ahead and resize them. To do that, let me click on the first box layer, click on it. Now hold down the shift button and click on the last box layer, and then click on Command T. This will allow you to resize all three of them all together. Just make it shorter and hit OK. I want to move the image down a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the image layer. And using my down arrow key, I'm just going to adjust it a little bit. Let's add some text. Go ahead and open your browser and go to lipsum.com. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, but this is where we will be grabbing some dummy text as a placeholder for before we get the real text in. I'll go ahead and just copy a sentence or two and go back to my Photoshop file. Here it's very important, click on the text tool and what you want to do is you want to click and drag this out to about this size. The reason you want to do this, you want to have control over the text. And I'll show you an example of that a little later. You can paste your text and hit, click on OK or that check at the top. Notice that you can't see the text. The reason why is because the text layer is below all the boxes. So I just want to drag that to the top. And you can't see the color because the color right now is blue. So let's change that into white and hit OK. Great, so now you see it. I don't like that font, it's not appropriate, so I'll go ahead and highlight that and use my font toolbar to just change things up. I'll change the size. Again, you could play with this in any way, shape, or form that you like, uh, that you want it to be. Um, let me change the font into something more readable. Um, maybe this is a tree gothic. I like that font. It's one of my favorite fonts. It's so clean. Make this smaller. Great. Um, again, this is just some of the things that you could play with. Um, I like using the paragraph uh, tab and changing the spacing of it. Sometimes that also enhances um, the look and feel of the text. Uh, and once you're happy with it, go ahead and click um, OK. Using my cursor tool, I'm going to go ahead and just move it around to my liking. Great. Now, I want to go ahead and change the font again to maybe Futura because I think that one will fit better. So let's go ahead and do that and then maybe change the font to something bigger. Great. Hit OK and then let me just <clears throat> adjust this a little bit more. And once you're happy and content with it, what you want to do now is duplicate that. So let me just drag that layer down into the new layer and then that duplicates it. All I'm doing now is just placing the text so that way each one is in um, each of the boxes. 
Let's go ahead and create a divider now by using the rectangular tool. Make sure you're in the first layer and click and drag it out creating a divider that looks like this. Great. Now let's go ahead and collect the selection tool. I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this layer because I know that we're going to need three of this. I'm just going to drag it out. Perfect. Now I'm just going to place it in each one of the boxes. Again, you could play around with this, find out which one you like the most. I don't. I think these are a little too thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and collect, uh, select the first layer, hit Shift and the last one, and then Control T. This will allow me to, or Command T, and this will allow me to resize the height. There you go. Okay. Now that we have that, I'm going to just using my arrow key. I just brought it down a little bit. Great. Now let's enter the title. Now let's go ahead and add the headline. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select a larger font because you need it to stand out. And that might be too big, so let's select a smaller one. Great. Now using my selection tool, I'm just going to adjust it with my arrow, my keyboard arrow. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that layer because I need it three times. I have three um, headlines, right? So I'll go ahead and just place them in each box. Now let's go ahead and change the headlines or the titles. So this will be, let me look at this, okay, financial district. That's actually where my office is at. <laughs> and this one, let's change it to the missions. Great, now just arrange that or adjust it according to what I want it to be. Great, now let's add some text to the bottom border. I'm going to get some text, the dummy text again, just copy that. Using my text tool, I'm just going to create a box a text box at the bottom that way I can control my text and then just paste it there now let me change the font size that's a little too big perfect great now let's use the rectangular tool and hit click and drag it out creating a shape like this now use our color selector and select the purple one great that's what we're trying to recreate the headline title so now I want to create that little tail. So using the custom shape tool, let's go ahead and select that and click on the talk one. It should create that tail effect that we want to use. Make sure it's a color purple, okay? So that way it matches. So let's go ahead and click and drag it out, creating a shape like this. Now make sure that this particular layer is behind the rectangular um, shape. So that way you can't see <laughs> the circle or the talk shape. Uh, if you notice, the shadow is on, so let's go ahead and turn that off. Just make sure you clicked on the layer and click on the FX button and just go ahead and click that off. Great. So now that you have this, let's go ahead and resize it so that way we could create the effect that we want. It's not too big, not too small, just the right size. And you do that by clicking on Command T on your keyboard and just resize it as you see fit. Great. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and add some text. I already know what font size I want to use, so I'm going to just drag one of our other title and just duplicate that layer and change this one to the Golden Gate Bridge. Make the font bigger because this is going to be our main headline. So let's go ahead and just make that a little bigger. Oh, too big. So let's go ahead and make that smaller. Perfect. Now for the bracket, so I'm going to create a new layer and just type that out, creating spaces in between and make that slightly larger than my main headline. And just using my arrow key, just move it so that way my title is inside the bracket. I'm going to go ahead and delete the space and great, now we have it. Let's go ahead and grab some dummy text. Great, once we've copied it, go ahead and create a text box and just paste it. I think my font is too big, so I'll go ahead and resize it. There you go, now it shows. And then once again, you can play with the paragraph uh, window or the tool to just kind of resize this and fix it the way you want it to show up. Let me just adjust the spacing really quick. Great. Now let's add a logo in the top left corner. I already have my logo, so I'll just open it up and then copy and paste it onto my project. And then I'll use Command-T to resize it. Perfect, and then just adjust it accordingly. Now let's add some text or some information in the top right. So let's go ahead and start typing out the phone number. So let's go ahead and say call. 
change the resize it uh, and then I like to play a lot with the paragraph tool just because I have more control over the look and feel of my text so I want to make sure this is left or right justified so that way it's all in order if you notice there's some uh, spacing issues so I'm going to go ahead and click on windows and paragraph so that I could have the spacing uh, tool show up so click on windows and it's paragraph okay and here you could change the spacings of the letter because it was too squished earlier so I went ahead and just fixed it by changing this up once I'm happy with it just click on check and then I'm just gonna go ahead and resize this make this a little smaller because I want the phone number to stand out great so let me go ahead and just move it over to the right corner like this great and then I want to add out the uh, complete address so let's do that really quick before we end this and once you've done that you are done you're complete great we are done so if you like this video be sure to like it and subscribe and to get more video tutorials to help you get your business noticed be sure to visit designityourselftv.com thank you again for watching and i'll see you next time bye